Lieutenant Dale Stillman has the face of a hero, but most heroes only have to live through hell once. Seven months ago, America and the world drew a line in the sand. Tonight, the battle has been joined. safely in your beds at night, or when you walk down Main Street under the blue skies of liberty, remember the ones who paid the price for our freedom. So once again, let us all thank our hometown heroes. And enjoy the festivities. Looking mighty sharp, sir. <laughs> what are you guys doing here? Let's go have a beer later. Meet you at the tavern. What time? Don't worry, sir. We'll find you. Now, if Korea wasn't a war, I'd like to know what the hell it is. Oh, Korea was a UN police action, Gus, not an official war. We haven't actually declared a damn war on anybody since World War II. And what is Vietnam? The Southeast Asia conflict. Anybody been in here looking for me? Not that I know of. Remember the Bosnian incident, where we incidentally dropped about a bajillion tons of bombs on their genocidal asses? Congress never declared war on them either. Say, hey, Dale, what did you call that little shooting match you were involved in? Slam, bam, thank you, Saddam. Hey, Dale? We ah. let Saddam's ass off the hook. We should have marched straight into Baghdad and hung him from the highest palm tree. You waiting on? Uh, some guys from my old outfit, they showed up today at the picnic out of the blue. Just like that. They said they'd be here, you know? Are these the guys you saved, Dale? Well, I don't know if I would say say it, you know. You're a hero. Why shouldn't you say it? I did my duty. Dale saved his whole squad, Gus. Dale don't like to toot his horn. Maybe one of those old buddies will help you get a job, huh? Yeah, I wouldn't say no. When they come. Look, they said they'd be here. They'll be here. Can I get a light, please? Come on! Come on! Come 
Our guys are gonna find us. Oh, God. Gonna be all right, Jimmy. I promise. Earth to damn. You want a cigarette? I don't smoke. He asked for a light beer, not a lighter, you dummy. <laughs> Vitamins. <laughs> vitamins, my ass. What kind of vitamins? Essential minerals and nutrients from my mind. You okay? Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay. I just wish those guys would get here. I thought they'd be here by now. You hear the one about the old man that wanted that sex drug? Viagra, you mean? Doctor says, you're too old for that sex pill. He says, Doc, I don't want it for sex. I just want to stop peeing on my shoe. <laughs> <laughs> You all right? You get something caught in your windpipe, Dale. I'm okay. Are you sure? Uh, you, you, you maybe had an asthma attack. You want a doctor? No. Well, maybe I should call the EMS just to be sure. Uh, 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 you got any allergies, Dale? No, I don't need a doctor. I'm fine. Well, you had some kind of episode. I'm fine. I just... I'm fine. I, I just had a spell. I can walk on my two feet. I'm just fine.
Welcome to hell, my friend. You ever played Russian roulette? The odds are fantastic, my friend. One bullet, five chances to win. Which is why I prefer Iraqi roulette. Because in my game, we have five bullets. And only one chance to live. Where is your platoon, Lieutenant? I told you, I don't know. I got lost in the gas attack. You're their commanding officer. Surely you know their position. You have very good luck. <laughs> Tell me, what is this war about? Why are you bombing our cities? You invaded Kuwait. Is this just about oil? Is that all? We're up to our necks in petroleum products. All you have to do is ask. Where are the rest of your men? I told you I don't know! You haven't felt anything yet. Evening, Lieutenant. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, I knew it. I've been waiting all night for you guys, but I knew you wouldn't let me down. Long time no see, sir. Oh, my God, it feels like yesterday. Dante, you, <laughs> Dante, you haven't changed at all. How the hell have you been, sir? I can't lie to you. You know, the memories. Hey. God, it's good to see you guys. Why haven't you kept in touch, sir? Me? What about you guys? Come on. Anyway, you guys look fantastic. You look uh, downright prosperous. You guys got jobs or anything? Anything you can hook me up with? Take care of me? <laughs> we we'll don't have to talk about that now. Let's forget about it. But the best damn outfit in Desert Storm. Too uncommon valor. Pocket watch you got there, sir. Yeah. Mm. That's a beauty, sir. Sure is. What's the inscription say? There is no inscription. What's wrong, sir? It's probably this medication they got me on. They say I have PTSD. PTSD what? <laughs> Post traumatic stress disorder. Fancy way of saying I haven't had a decent night's sleep since the war ended. Is that why your hands are shaking, Lieutenant? Honestly? You know, sometimes the only thing that keeps me going is knowing that I did the right thing back then. 
Tell us what happened back there, sir. You know what they say, sir. It helps to talk about it. What can I say I went to hell and back? With that, they gave me some pretty ribbons and a free hot dog once a year, huh? Now tell us what really happened, sir. Tell the truth, Lieutenant. Yeah, tell us, sir. What are you talking about? Tell us why you abandoned your troops under fire. Abandoned you? I got a medal for uncommon valor. You were a common coward. At me? I risked my life trying to save you, man. If you saved us, sir, why are we dead? You never bothered to find out what happened to us, did you, sir? You don't know what I went through. We know exactly what you went through. Huh. Tell him. Go ahead, Jimmy. Tell him. Our vehicle hit a landmine? Jimmy was injured. We came under fire. Lieutenant, I'm over here! Lieutenant! Over here, Lieutenant! Oh, God, we're gonna die! This is Alpha 1 to DS Com. Repeat, this is Alpha 1 to DS Com. We are in desperate need of assistance here. We came under gas attack, sir, and you ran. <laughs> I was captured. I was, I was tortured. You were never tortured, Lieutenant. You don't know, all right? You weren't there. You watched someone else being tortured. laid a hand on you. Do you want the same thing to happen to you? This is all that's left of them. Now, why don't you tell me where your friends are? Tango, Victor. Seven, nine, zero, four. <laughs> Do you know what the Iraqis did? No, I don't want to know. Look. And here, sir. Time for you to rejoin your men, sir.
he's dead. Shot? Where's the gun? The greatest heroism isn't facing the enemy. It's facing the truth. Truth takes no prisoners. A monster has moved into 2460 Terrell Street. It has a human face, but make no mistake about it. This is a monster. Family man Jim Osgood must now battle the beast. Mom, what's wrong? Nothing. You hungry? Come on. A convicted sex offender is allowed to move into a building full of kids? Well, somebody must be keeping tabs on him, a parole officer, somebody. They can't watch him 24 hours a day. Well, look, we don't even know what this guy did. Maybe, maybe it was relatively harmless. Convicted sex offender. How can that be harmless? I don't know. Maybe, maybe he was a flasher or a... <gasps> These men commit the same crime again and again and again. I know that, Sally. I'm a lawyer. Then do something. I would love to, but tell me what. What do you expect me to do, Sally? Something. I expect you to do something. Toys. The son of a bitch is unpacking toys. What would he be doing with toys? Oh, my God. What? What if they're bait? Bait? Oh, come on. Well, what else would a grown man be doing with toys? My uncle collected model cars, Look, and he wasn't... this guy is out of here. I want him out. We all want him out, Alan. But how are we going to do that? Look, there's three of us and one of him. Let's get him alone and not so politely suggest that he move on. Look, the point is to keep the children safe. I don't think antagonizing this guy is in our best interests. <laughs> By all means, let's not antagonize him. In fact, let's say we send the welcome wagon. Look, we go over there making threats. That guy could have a gun. So what? I have a gun. Oh, sure as hell, get a gun. I'll get a damn Uzi. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I think we're getting ahead of ourselves here. We haven't even tried the police. Now, maybe they'd be willing to keep him under surveillance. For all we know, he's already under surveillance. Well, that'd be something. So you just wait until he actually molests a child and then you think about stepping in? Look, I sympathize. I'm a father myself. But you're not a father living in this building, are you? Our hands are tied. We notify the neighbors, but... At well, we certainly appreciate the heads up, but now what the hell are we supposed to do? You should have told him about the toys. They don't care. They sent the letter and now it's on us. Ed Neville is our new neighbor, whether we like it or not. Who's Ed Neville? Why is he bad? Well, he committed a crime. And why isn't he in jail? He was in jail, but... He escaped? <sighs> no, no. No more questions. It's getting late. Just stay away from strangers, and if anybody that you don't know tries to talk to you or touch you, you just tell us right away, all right? And don't go anywhere alone. Not even to the bathroom? 
The bathroom's all right. But not to Kira's and not to the courtyard. Deal? Okay. Good night, sweetie. on the windows. Mom, I'm eight years old. Uh, do we still need the motion detectors? Mom, I'm gonna miss the bus. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is so stupid. So how long will it take to install the whole thing? Little. He was nice. Oh, he was pretending to be nice. Do you understand that? Was he a stranger? What did he say to you? He asked if I like school. Did he keep you from getting off? No. I just forgot to press the button. Did he touch you? I thought he was a neighbor. He's a bad neighbor. Is he the bad man? Did he touch you? I, I don't think so. You don't think so? I know. I'm sorry, Mommy. I didn't know. Sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, God. Oh. We've got to watch this guy, and I mean 24-7. Well, we can't watch him every second of the day. Well, then we'll hire a security guard. We'd have to hire more than We're one. We're not hiring a damn security guard because this Neville is moving out. Alan, why are we waiting for this guy to actually do some damage? Come on. We can't go on living like this. It's time we send this guy a message. We have to, Jim. Were you terrified? I wasn't scared at all. You lie, you were so scared. I didn't even know it was him. I never get into an elevator with that guy. Not if he paid me a million bucks. I would. Oh yeah, sure. I would, he was nice. He's a criminal. Just because he's been to jail doesn't mean he isn't nice. Would you go to his apartment? My mom and dad wouldn't let me. See? If I could go to his apartment without my mom and dad finding out, then I would. Prove it. Do you dare me? I double dare you. But you can't just say you were there. We need actual proof. Yeah. Like you have to take something. Something? That can only come from that apartment. Yeah. Are you, are you sure that's his car? Unit T21. Yeah, that's that's his car. Are you crazy? Someone will see us. So? Who's gonna protect the pedophile, Jim?
never seen Steve like that before. He was completely irrational. He's responding the way any normal man would when his family is threatened. Oh, so I'm less of a man because I didn't beat my chest and bash his car in? I mean, what do you expect me to... <laughs> Janie, what happened? Where did you... Oh, my God. Whatever happened, it isn't your fault. Did he hurt you? Whatever it is, you can tell us. She's shaking. Did he scare you? What? What did he do? He had a knife. Knife? Oh, Oh, God. Care. We're not calling the police. But they'll arrest him now. He came at her with a knife. I won't have Janie scarred for life by testifying in some sex trial. Sally, we have no choice. We'll move. We'll move as far away as we need to. We've lived here for years. You love it here. Janie's friends are here. We should make new friends. And what about our friends? And what about their kids? Do we just leave them as prey for this guy? Is that what it comes down to, every man for himself? Yes. When it comes to my daughter, that's exactly what it comes down to. I'm calling the police. No! Sally, this has got to end. This... Damn it. Mr. Osgood? Yes? I need to speak to you about your daughter. He just wants his toy back. Evidently, it's an antique of some kind. Why do you suppose a child molester even has toys? Well, if you say he's a child molester, then he's a child molester. But... Your department sent the letter. The point is, Mr. Osgood, he's the one who called us. I don't believe this. He lures an eight-year-old girl into his apartment. You don't even seem to care. According to your daughter, she was there when he got there. (sighs) He sits in the courtyard at all hours of the day and night. The children in this building can't even play on the swings anymore without that freak down there leering at them. I can't arrest the man for leering. Well, then you tell us what we're supposed to do, because we're under siege here. Mr. Osgood, even if what you say is true and the man is a parole defender, if he's done his time, he's got rights. And what about our rights? What about our daughter's rights? Your daughter broke into his house. I I can't arrest him. What is wrong with you people? You're supposed to protect us. Sally, Sally, it's all right. It's all right. right. Just take the damn toy and get out of here. It's all right. (sighs) I saw this movie once where this guy hired some thugs to beat the hell out of this convict that was threatening his family. You're a lawyer, you must know someone. I'm in real estate law. Then we'll do it ourselves. Yeah, we'll go to prison for assault and battery. Then we'll... We'll just make it so he can't call the police. What are you talking about? What do you think I'm talking about? Look, this Neville, he doesn't deserve to live. You're crazy. You almost lost your daughter. I'm not losing mine. Wake up, counselor. No one else is saving our families. All my life, I've played by the rules. What do you do when the rules don't work anymore?
You heard the gunshots, huh? Sure. We all did. We were playing cards in our condo. All of you? Yeah, all of us. I thought it was a car backfiring. So no one saw anything? No. No, sir. All right. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Osgood. Hello, officer. Terrible thing. Terrible thing. Pretty rare for this kind of a neighborhood. Oh, incidentally, you people having any kind of problem with vandalism? Not that I've heard of. Because the victim's car was all bashed to hell down there in the garage. I guess somebody must have had it in for him. Gambling debts, maybe. Couldn't have been uh, anything else, could it, Mr. Oscar? Well, good thing for you, you were playing cards with your friends. Yeah, good thing for me. Good night, Mr. Oscar. Good night, officer. Hey, Tiger! Dad! <laughs> I got 100 on my spelling test. Don't you always get 100 on your spelling test? I got 98 once. Really? Good news, I got 100 on my spelling test. <laughs> Dad, I gotta go get some ice cream. Hi, honey, how are you? What is it? What's wrong? Police department. This is to inform you that our previous letter misidentified the new address of sex offender Edward Neville as 2460 Terrell Street, apartment 221. The correct address should have read apartment 212. We regret any inconvenience this may have caused you. It wasn't him. The whole time, it wasn't him. What's wrong? Is is there another bad guy, Dad? Dad? Who's the bad guy, Dad? Dad? Who is it, Dad? Dad? Who's the bad guy, Dad? There's still a monster living at 2460 Terrell Street. And every time he looks in the mirror, Jim Osgood will see it.